You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 94, with Scott DeStefanis. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up, what's up, Men of Abundance? I am Wally Carmichael, your host and founder of the Men of Abundance podcast and fastly growing community. If you are brand new to Men of Abundance, this is your first time listening, welcome. I'm glad you're here. We are a different kind of podcast in that we don't just interview entrepreneurs, high income earners, people that have something to sell, stuff like that. We are interviewing and we are having conversations with men and women and couples who are truly living a life of abundance in their own right. And we are sharing those conversations with you. We're sharing those kick in the gut moments. We are talking about what it took them to get out of that kick in the gut moment and to get to the point to where they're living a life of abundance and then paying it forward to you so that you, number one, can realize that there is so much abundance in the world today. All you have to do is open up your mind to be able to accept it. I know, I know, that is easier said than done. I totally get it. But here's the thing. When you hang around the right people, you start thinking the right way so that you can live the way that those people live. So you've heard it before. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Right now, you're spending time with men of abundance. And if you want to spend more time with us, other than just listening to all of us have these conversations on the podcast, you can hang out with us at the Men of Abundance fan page, which is at Facebook forward slash Men of Abundance. And man, you can get into our private Facebook group. Just go to Men of Abundance. Dot com. Click on the link up at the top that says members only and scroll down to the bottom. Click on the link. It will take you right to our Men of Abundance private community on Facebook. Click on that and it will give you access. By being in that group, you are going to find out first and you're going to have an opportunity to be a beta group member of the Men of Abundance Society that is going to be launching very soon. I've been talking about this for a while. I've been getting the platform in place and I'm absolutely excited for everybody who's going to be able to get into that group, especially for those of you who are going to be the beta members because you're going to help the group develop so that together we're going to help men all over the world become the men that they want to be and live the abundant lifestyle that they want in everything and family, faith, finances, and fitness. So when you're ready to do that, go ahead and go over to menofabundance.com. Go up and click on the members only tab so that you can get access to our private Facebook group so that you'll be the first to know when the Men of Abundance Society is ready to launch. And as usual, I want to afford you the opportunity to be abundant in your life today. And all you have to do is share this podcast and go over to iTunes and leave a rating and review. The easiest way to leave us a review is if you're listening to this on the website, just click on the leave a review button right under the podcast player. It'll take you right to iTunes where you can leave your review. Otherwise, if you're listening to Men of Abundance on your podcast player on your phone, you have to search in iTunes. Just go on your podcast player and search in iTunes, Men of Abundance. Even if you're already subscribed, they still want you to search for it for some reason. Search Men of Abundance. It'll only take you a second. And then click on the show art. It'll take you right in the middle of the page. It'll say leave a review. Just click on that. You can leave your review right there. It is greatly appreciated. The importance of that is so that other men can find these conversations and get out of it what you're getting out of it. All right. Our featured guest today is Scott DeStefanis. Scott is a confidence coach that helps successful men achieve the relationships and money they want. With over 10 years experience teaching internationally, his goal is that men are fully living their purpose and have relationships that are connected and aligned. Scott is very interested in men getting connected to and expressing their deepest truth and by doing so create a purpose for themselves that provides a way for them to be fulfilled and fully expressed in their lives. 
Men of Abundance, it is my distinct honor to introduce you to Mr. Scott DeStefanis. Scott, welcome to the show, man. Yeah, thanks, Wally. It's great to be here. Did I pronounce your name right or did I completely destroy it? No, you, you, you pronounced it perfectly. All right, perfect. Where are you at in the world, man? Uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Wonderful. One of the places I have not been yet. In fact, my my wife is planning every year. My wife and her high school friends from Panama, from Central America, they plan a trip somewhere, and they've been to Vegas, New York, all over the place. And this year, they're planning a trip to down to Vegas with a couple, or not Vegas, down to uh, Canada with a couple of them. Oh, nice. Whereabouts are they? Whereabouts are they going? I'm not sure exactly. She just said I'm going to Canada. So I said, all right, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> there's awesome. a couple well, locations well, they're going to get to because two of them live in Canada right now oh great yeah well one of the things I would recommend is definitely come to Toronto it's the the most multicultural city on the planet and if you want to get a taste of you know how the the biggest cultural melting pot on the planet Toronto's the Toronto's the place to see I love that and I love places that are multicultural uh, with a lot of flair and I like the uh, you know the, the the whole melting pot analogy but I always I used to be an equal opportunity advisor for the US Army and one of the analogies that I stuck with that I really enjoyed more than the melting pot because I envision a melting pot where all the different colors come together and they all become one color usually this ugly gray color <laughs> <laughs> so I like the the, the analogy of a, of a pot of stew where you have celery meat potatoes all your seasonings various other vegetables and stuff and you can still see that a celery is celery and the meat is the meat and the carrots are carrots but they take on each other's flavor they yeah. they maintain their own personality but they also take on some of the other flavors so i just love that environment where people are doing doing that yeah that's awesome that's actually a, a, a great way to describe toronto so uh, <laughs> i think i'm going to steal that one going forward too easy i love it yeah and uh, so I like to start out the show basically the same way I start pretty much every single morning, with, which is with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today, Scott? I've got to be grateful for my beautiful wife and my as-of-yet unborn daughter. Mm. It's just a total joy to wake up every morning and have them in my life and you know especially my wife at this point in time she's been a, a total trooper throughout her pregnancy and i'm in complete awe of how she's handling herself and and handling being pregnant for the first time excellent yeah it's a lot of a lot of uh new things i've been there three times and uh it's every single time is there's something new about it every time, but that first time is just so exciting. So many exciting things going on. Totally. So I gave you a brief bio, and that really is just kind of what you do. Um, here on Men mm -hmm. of Abundance, we like to get to know the person behind the greatness and the person behind the abundance. So let's get a little bit personal. We're going to get into that kick in the gut moment and that pivot point for you, but we really want to get to know who Scott is. Sure. Yeah. So... Let's see. I'm, I've been married now for four years, and uh, prior to, to you know, starting my business and, and working with men, I worked for a personal development organization for the better part of four years. And that's really where I got my, my start into the realm of, of coaching and personal development. was very successful in that industry and, and with that company. And decided it was after four years decided it was time to move on and and kind of felt the entrepreneurial spirit calling me so after that I, I helped start a company that was designed to create a new model for couples counseling and that was my last corporate position and spent the better part of two years helping to build that company uh, unfortunately the the company didn't make it but the the model we used really worked with couples and so I decided that I was going to bring that to my personal practice of working with men and it was something that I was very passionate about and since about 2012 I've been working with men in one-on-one -on -one in group capacities. Very nice, very interesting and I like that and as we were talking before we got started here on the show is this Men of Abundance community that I'm building has taken on a life of its own, and it's mm -hmm. going in that direction. I didn't expect it to go in that direction, but it is based on 
audience feedback and guys contacting me and saying, hey, can you coach me and and living a life of abundance? And some of these guys pretty much already live a pretty darn good life by most people's standards, but they feel that they're they're missing that oomph. They're missing something in their life. And, and I'm more than happy to do that. So I'm excited to talk to you today because you're doing that. You're there. And yeah, I, I'm really digging it. I love that's one of the reasons why I gravitated towards you. Uh, one, because like you said, with the entrepreneurial spirit, once that thing gets a hold of you, it's and then you get a taste of it it's like oh my goodness it just does not let go yeah it's it's definitely been you know aside from from relationship i'd say it's been the the second biggest growth experience of my life and you know when when i'm my wife is pregnant as i mentioned and once i become my father i'm sure that'll that'll displace them all but uh, <laughs> uh up to this point right now certainly it's been a wild ride yeah it certainly will there's no doubt that uh, daughter is going to grab a hold of you, grab a hold of your heart and your mind, and just basically take over. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Kind of, it kind of feels that way already. It yeah, kind of feels I'm that sure. Way Absolutely. Yeah. So you know, you've got a lot of stuff going on, and you just mentioned a few things about the company that you was getting started, and it didn't work out for whatever reason. But you know, I really like to have this conversation with guys about the kick in the gut moments because it seems to me that in many cases, and that's not all cases, but in many cases, people take that leap of faith and something projects them into that. And generally, it is a kick in the gut moment. That moment when Mm -hmm. you're kicked in the gut, you feel it, it literally takes you to your knees. And, you know, so what we'd like to do right now is not highlight that, but I do want to bring it up. So if you could Mm -hmm. share that story with us, that'd be great. Yeah, so um, the year's year's 2013, and I'm engaged to be married and you know my wife and I are planning our wedding and you know the 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 thing was is we had been together since 2008 so we'd been together for five years before before we had gotten engaged and once we had gotten engaged you know I, I, I was kind of old school and talked to to my wife's parents and asked their permission and they gave their blessing and you know, everything seemed to be going smoothly. And then we were scheduled to, to get married in um, mid-2013. And early 2013, her family just kind of started having these rumblings and, and misgivings about us getting married. And at first, I didn't really think too much about it. I had thought to myself, okay, well, you know, everybody's got reservations and, you know, they're, they're entitled to have theirs, but they kind of kept getting louder and louder to the point where, you know, my wife started to get upset over the fact that they were having all these misgivings. And eventually it got to a point where I wanted to, to sit down and have a conversation with each of her family members because I realized if we were going to get married there was no way that we were going to get married without her family at the wedding. And my wife was like fully prepared to just be like, well, if they are not on board to hell with them, you know, they're they're not going to be with us. Okay. They're just not going to be at the wedding. They're not invited to the wedding. Mm -hmm. And that would have been kind of like the easy route for me to take just to be like, yeah, okay, sure. You know, we'll we'll do that. But, you know, deep down I knew that if I was going to, I knew how a how much my wife loved her family, and b I knew that our relationship was never going to work if her and I and and her family and I weren't on the same page. You know, my wife comes from a, a, a you know she's Trinidadian, so she's got a very you know West Indian family background, and if you know anything about Indian background. That the family is a very tight knit community, mm-hmm. and I knew that if you know her family wasn't at the wedding, that would be something that would haunt us for the rest of our day. And so I took it upon myself to, to say, okay, you know, here's here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna sit down with every single member of her family, and I'm gonna hear what they've got to say. Because clearly there's a reason why they don't think I'm I'm the right match for her. 
And so I, I literally sat down with every single member of the family and, you know, we had a conversation about I wasn't good enough to, to be with her. And they brought up some really great points, <laughs> mm. you know, um, and, and, and some of it was tough to hear. And, you know, things like, I don't think you're smart enough to be with, a, with, with my daughter. I don't think you'll ever be alive for her. I don't think you love her enough. You know, some really things, real real things that they said to me that, you know, as you put it, like really were, were a punch in the gut to hear. Especially given the fact that we had been together for five years previously. You know, my, my thought process was like, you know, we couldn't have had this conversation, you know, three years earlier or anything. Um, and, and so I... So one by one, I, I sat down, I had a conversation with, with each member of her family, and at the end of it, you know, thanked them for giving me their, their raw and honest feedback. And pretty much one by one, I, I essentially changed each of their minds. And, and I really changed their minds by just listening and, and not really defending myself to them. I really just listened to what they had to say. And so that brought us to probably about, you know, three, two months before the wedding. And at that point, I'm thinking, okay, you know, everything's good. The wedding's all set up. And now, at, you know, we, we've kind of overcome the, the, the hill here. We're over the hump. You know, the, it should be smooth sailing from here on out. And two months before our wedding my wife comes to me with all the same concerns that her family had. And that one was probably 10 times worse for me to experience her concerns from her as opposed to her family. See, her family was really just mirroring her concerns that she herself wasn't actually addressing with me. Mm. And so it was really like, you know, my world kind of shattered at that point because I, I had had her for support going into all these conversations with her family. You know, I, I sat down with them one-on-one -on -one and we had conversations one-on-one, -on -one, but I always had her as someone to lean back on and, and bounce things off of. And I was really kind of at this point where, you know, I'm, I'm left to deal with this on my own. And, you know, I had some great friends that I could, I could talk to, but they weren't like in it with me, you know? And so... Two months before the, the wedding, I, you know, my wife and I are sleeping in separate beds. We're not really talking, and, and my world's collapsed all around me, and I'm not sure if this thing's going to happen. And at, so at that point, I was, it was probably one of the lowest moments I've ever had in my entire life. Not to mention that during that time, you know, I had just started my business, so didn't really have a lot of money, as you as you well know when you're starting a business mm -hmm. and you're bootstrapping. So finances are low, and, and the future really does look pretty grim for us right now. You know, I, I can't say at this point in time that her concerns aren't valid concerns. And I remember, you know, a few weeks before the wedding, I sat down with her and... I made her promise me that there was no way she was going to walk down that aisle if she wasn't 100% certain that she wanted to be with me. And I said to her, I said, don't worry about what the, what the guests are going to think. If I have to stand up and tell everyone, listen, you know, the, the wedding's not happening and I got to be responsible for, for why it's not happening, I'll do that, Okay. I want you to be free and clear to make a choice and I'm going to I'm going to do the work that I need to do to alleviate your concerns. And it's and I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it because if I don't that's inconsistent with the man I want to be. Yeah. Well. And <laughs> yeah, that took a heck of a that took a heck of a twist because I wasn't expecting that with your wife having all having your back the whole time and then basically the whole time it really wasn't the family it was they were just feeding off of your wife. 
Yeah. Yeah, well, and and it was, it, you know, it it I didn't expect it either, by the way. <laughs> I'm <laughs> right? sure. And uh, <laughs> um, it, and and so it, you know, it really took something. And and you know, a week before the wedding, I I had done. I essentially at that point reached out to you know everyone I know, and luckily I'm I'm friends with some you know really great mentors and coaches and you know teachers that really helped provide insight into you know what was really going on for me and I knew that if we were going to get married something had to change and the thing that really had to change you know was was ultimately me and and who I was in the world because up until that point my relationship was really about trying to get my wife's approval for things, mm. you know, and which is which is a you know a big problem that I know I'm not the only man that's that's dealt with that, and I knew that if I was going to get married, if this relationship was going to succeed, if I was going to succeed in life, I had to break that pattern. Because there was there was no way that I was going to be able to, you know, be successful in in my business, be successful in my in any relationship, if the 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 motivating factor was dr- that was driving me was trying to get the approval of whoever it was that I was with. Yeah, very good point, and you're absolutely correct. Uh, it is certainly my experience that many people, not just men, but many people do. Yeah. They, they get caught up in that. One, they get caught up in a relationship and end up staying with the relationship because they feel an obligation and to society, to the family, even to the kids, quite frankly, mm-hmm. which can mm-hmm. later on, it's just a recipe for disaster, quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, either you're going to personally implode or explode <laughs> yeah. or the relationship is going to. Uh, yeah. Certainly. So it, it's a, you know, I commend you for being the man that it took to to do that and to make that decision. Because quite frankly, somebody doesn't look at that. Many people don't look at that as really being the man to step up and make that decision. But in fact, it is. Uh, it, yeah. I have a very similar um, story with my own uh, when I started dating my wife. Very very similar mm-hmm. to that. Uh, for many reasons so and I did basically exactly what you did I sat down with the family as well and it's, it's no hope for a whole nother story but yeah I definitely um, commend you for that and what else did you get out of that because one thing that I get out of this that really resonates with me and I want the listeners to pay attention to is that you sought out those mentors and those leaders and those coaches and those men that you had in your life that you felt that would give you the straight answer and that would help you make yep. that decision. Not that, not that every, you know, because maybe you didn't need help making the decision. You just needed some advice to make sure that the decision you were making was in fact the right decision. And it really, yeah. I'm sure it absolutely helped to have that uh, there for you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, the probably the, the biggest thing that I, that I learned um, through the whole experience that has really you know, shifted everything for me is to believe in myself even when nobody else does. See, part of the whole pattern, I'll I'll call it, of needing, you know, my wife's approval or, or my fiance at the time, her approval or others' approval was that it was really just a, a, a mask because I didn't have, I didn't really believe in myself. Mm-hmm. You know, and and having other people's approval was a way for me to get confidence that what I was doing was right. And what it took was, you know, having having her 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 family turn on me, her turn on me. You know, essentially everybody that was that was really close around me, kind of turn on me, so to speak, is the word I'll use. You know, even though it wasn't really like, you know. Um, uh, antagonistic, mm-hmm. but you know, lose their faith in me is probably a better way to say it. So that I had to generate that faith in myself. And the the moment that it shifted, you know, I'll never forget it. I I, I the week before our wedding, I took my wife out and said, "Listen, I want to take you on a date." And I I took her out and sat her down and 
had a conversation with her saying like, listen, I know who I am in the world now. I know what I'm about, I know what I can produce, and I know what's possible for, for our life. And I'm not going to live the rest of my life with you trying to prove that for you. You're either gonna climb on board or you're not. And in that moment, everything shifted. Like she just literally melted in my arms in that moment and was like, I've been waiting for you to say that for five years. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm feeling that. I really am because I can totally relate to that. You know, so many, I'm just really kind of lost for words because it really does make that much of a difference to stand up and say, you know, have that communication. Now, I will say that yeah. you have to make the decision on, on where you want to go and what you want to do. In a marriage, yeah. I'm a strong believer that it does, it's not that you have to ask permission. You just have to each be on board. And your own totally. level. So, for instance, I know a lot of couples, and this is myself included, that I'm very, very entrepreneurial and always mm -hmm. have been. And my wife, not so much. She supports mm -hmm. me. She supports me. She just will not. There's certain things that she doesn't She doesn't get involved in the business, per se, and stuff like that. So, and I'm okay with that. I know, but she supports me in that. And we mm -hmm. have, we've had this conversation so it's extremely important to have that conversation because otherwise what I see some people do, they will go ahead and they will run the business. They will do everything they have to do. They'll finance the business completely behind the partner's back. Yeah. And you might as well be cheating on them. I mean, you might as yeah. well be out with another man or woman. It's that serious. You totally. think it's not, but it's totally that serious uh, to do something like that. Uh, yeah, you well, know. you know, I, I, I was going to say one of the one of the things that is really, you know, critical for any relationship, I think it's, it's kind of obvious is trust. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that on not just like a, a baseline, do what I say I'm going to do level, but, you know, on a on an emotional level, on a on a, you know, spiritual level, if you will, if you don't have that in your relationship, that's going to slowly eat away and degrade the level of intimacy and the level of connection that you've got in that relationship. Right. So, you know, I think, I think you bring up a, a, a really great point in, in that aspect where, you know, yeah, you, you definitely, it's, it's not about asking permission, but it's, it's certainly about making sure that you're on the same page. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. One thing you do have to get permission from, then the one person you definitely have to get permission from and give permission to is yourself. Totally. You really do. I see so many people that have so much potential. They mm -hmm. just feel that they don't have, they, they have, you know, what we refer to as, you know, with authors and business owners is imposter syndrome. Well, who am I to, you know, be able to coach somebody in doing something of this nature? And you really just have to give yourself permission to succeed because yeah. a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. I, I agree. You know, I agree wholeheartedly. So let's talk about what you're doing now and how you really kind of, you gave a little bit about how you were working in personal development and whatnot with the other company and, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So what specifically do you do now for men in helping them build their confidence and living this life that they're striving for? Yeah, totally. So I created a program called Man School and it's a six week online program that's you know, geared towards men, and, and the whole premise of the program is to help men become the man that they've always wanted to be. And it's a it's a comprised of two components. One is live calls that I do every week, and the other the other part of it is a private Facebook group. And on the live calls, we cover topics that are really designed to support men in you know winning their inner game and and upping their level of confidence. Okay, because so much of our mentality as men is drive towards, you know, having or getting that, ex focusing on the external things, you know, things like getting the money, getting the woman, getting the cars, getting the good looks, you know, shaping our bodies. And those things are important. But I, for me, one of the things that I found that is more important, I would say, is you know mastering that that inner game of self and you know you talked about giving yourself permission to succeed you know 
And, and this program helps men do that. And so we cover things like, you know, integrity and masculine and feminine energy and discovering and living your purpose and, you know, leaving the kind of legacy that you want to leave now after you're dead. So, you know, it's a, it's a six week program. It's really comprehensive and, you know, a lot of fun is the other thing I'll say. I'm sure it is. Yeah, absolutely. How do you get men engaged in these type of activities and keep them engaged? A couple of things. One, I think it's all about finding, you know, the, the, the right man for the program. I'm not interested in having the program fit the man. I'm interested in having the man fit the program. And, um, you know, when you do that, I think, you know, the men will keep themselves engaged because you're covering things that are relevant to them. Right. You know, um, I'm not interested in, in the guy who, you know, wants to chug beer and talk about the game. That's cool. You know, I got nothing, nothing against guys that, that are up to that. But I'm interested in the guys who are ready to, to work on themselves, who are ready to take their game to the next level. And so, you know, that's who this program's for, you know, and, and that's who this program's going to appeal to. So for me, you know, when it comes to, to keeping guys engaged, you know, I, I, I write blogs and articles on these things that, you know, they're going to be interested in. Yeah, that's excellent. That makes sense. When you were saying that, I'm, I'm envisioning the movie Hitch where Will Smith refused to work with the guy who just wanted to get in the girl's pants. <laughs> Basically, totally. He was trying to yeah. get into the program for the wrong reason. Uh, yeah, And I'm sure exactly. you deal with that from time to time. Because I do. I've, I've had people contact me that I just have no desire to work with. Well, yep. Quite frankly, it's too easy to stalk people these days. Uh, and I do. I do. I do social media stalking. And when I see certain mm-hmm. people, the way they act on Facebook, if they're willing to act that way in public, in a public forum on Facebook, they're certainly not somebody that, you know, I feel they need help. I just refer them to a different person that is sure. helping them in that in that arena. It's not something yeah. that I'm willing to take on. Uh, yeah, just well, because of where the, you know, where their belief is. Yeah, well, and and you know, I think the the thing that I've learned because I have taken clients like that on in the past. And it, it really never works for them or me. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that I've, I've just learned in my journey here is that there's a level of integrity that's required for both me and, you know, the, the person that I'm going to be working with. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to have that baseline of, of, of integrity in order for results to get achieved because otherwise it doesn't happen. You know, they have to be at a, a certain point in their life. I've got to, and, and I've got to be excited and on my, willing to be bringing my A game in, in regards to working with them. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure you've got quite a few good news stories out of what you've been doing over the last 10 years. I'd like to hear at least one of those good news stories and then we'll get into the pay it forward round. Yeah, sure. So um, probably one of, one of my um, best stories, I'd say, is working with um, uh, my my one client Peter, and you know he was he was someone that I worked with, God, probably about a year or two ago, and was in a relationship that was good, not great, and decided that he was ready to take the the next step. He was a you know successful executive, and you know wasn't wasn't happy with the with the way his relationship was and specifically who he was in in his relationship and so you know we worked together over a period of you know i think it was about 2 months and inside of that 2 months i'll never forget it you know we we got on the phone one day and he said to me he goes you know scott since working with you every morning my wife wakes up and says i can't believe that i'm married to you I love that. Yeah, it was, you know, it's just one of those moments where, you know, I, I, I really got present to, you know, the work that I'm doing and how awesome it is for, you know, me to, to be a catalyst for him to, to achieve that for his life. Um, but how awesome it is for him to be able to, to finally say that. That's wonderful, man. Thanks for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. So, Scott, we're going to pay it forward to our abundant leaders. You ready to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. So give our men of abundance one to three actionable steps that they can take today. Yeah. So I think the first thing that I would say is start meditating. If you're not meditating, you know, start meditating. I think that's 
the most overlooked and underused self-awareness tool that anyone can do for themselves. The, the second thing I would say as, a, as an actionable step is really start to look at and define what integrity means for you and look at where you're out of alignment with your values. And the third thing that I would say, God, do I have a third one right now? I think I only have two. That's perfect. Those are prob- yeah, those are the two. And those are two very good ones. I agree. Yeah. What daily habits make up the biggest impact in your life? I'm sure meditating is one, but what else do you yep. do every day that makes a huge impact in your life? Yeah. So the second thing I, I, I do is I read. I love, I'm an avid reader, and I, can, I devour just about everything I can get my hands on. And the third thing is exercise. You know, if I do those three things in a day, usually my days are, you know, my productivity is way higher than on days that I don't. And my mindset, you know, my my overall experience of life goes up. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Just vital. So speaking of reading, what are you reading or listening to right now that you'd recommend to our abundant leaders and why? Well, what I'm I'm reading right now, uh, Parenting from Within, given that my, my wife is pregnant. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm learning all about what it is to, to be a father. So the book I'm reading right now, which is uh, by an author by the name of Dan Siegel, uh, this book is all about essentially dealing with your own past experiences so you can better parent your child and not you know, shy away when your child has similar experiences. You know, as you know, whatever you don't deal with in yourself, you know, you're as a, as a coach, I'm sure you've you've heard this before. Whatever shadows or issues or patterns that you don't break for yourself, you're not going to be able to help your clients through. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so, you know, this book is is essentially taking that framework and applying it to parenthood. So I'm I'm really digging that. You know, I really wished I had the insight to do that when I was a young man and for having my first child. Women just have that instinctive ability to parent. And you know, yeah. I'm, I'm overgeneralizing. I know there's a generalization there. But for the most part, in my experience, women have that instinct. Men, quite frankly, we don't. Most mm-hmm. men do not. I didn't. And I still felt that I was going to be able to go out and hang out with my buddies and do all this other crazy stuff. And, and, and I didn't know what I was doing. And therefore, I kind of... It was actually fortunate for me at the time because I was deployed quite a bit. I was always gone. Mm-hmm. So it did make mm-hmm. it easier on me. I wasn't there all the time. So it did make it easier on me. But And I had that excuse to live by. Would mm-hmm. I change that? Yes, that I would change. I would certainly change. If there's anything I'd change in my past, it would be to be there more with my two younger boys than I have been with my third boy who I've been with, you know, most of his, you know, seven years. Other than his first year, I was deployed to Iraq for, the, you know, two weeks after he was born. But my point is, is reading and getting educated uh, from others or from books, whatever it takes, man, it's it's vital. No matter what you're getting ready to get into and what stage of life you're getting ready to get into, find an expert, find other men who have been through that and learn from them. So it's just vital to do totally. that. It really decreases the failure rate. And and I'm a big believer of, you know, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to be learning something, you know. And and I, I believe you're never too old to, to learn anything, and you should never stop learning anything. Absolutely, absolutely. So i got one last question for you, Scott, and that is what does living a life of abundance mean to you? Yeah, living a life of abundance mean, li- means to me, what that means to me is, you know, having my relationship work, it means being a, a, a great dad to my daughter when she's born, and it means going out and living my purpose and succeeding in inside of business. Absolutely love it. We're going to close this up, and before we do, please leave us with a parting piece of guidance, any way that we can get in touch with you, and then we'll say aloha. Yeah. Well, um, I guess the, the parting piece of guidance that I have for everybody is – you know, just that never, never stop learning. And, you know, as cliche as it sounds, never give up in, in, on your dreams and your ventures. You know, I, I think that's one of the things that has been driving me all this, all these years is to, you know, never admit defeat. And, uh, and in terms of how you can get in touch with me, you can, my, my website is mensrelationshipcoaching.com. And uh, if you're interested in the in the man school program, you can go to mensrelationship.com slash man school. Excellent. And we'll have all of that linked up and any of the links that we talked about in the books 
and whatnot. We'll have all that linked up in the show notes at menofabundance.com, complete with timestamps so that you can click on whatever little timestamp you want to go directly to that portion of our conversation here. It's all linked up there right at menofabundance.com. Just search Scott in the search bar. This episode will pop right up. So, Scott, I truly appreciate your time, man. I love what you're doing. I see us uh, collaborating and, and talking much more in the future uh, in reference to helping men live their life. And uh, as I say, live their life of abundance. Uh, and love I'm it. just excited about doing that. So have an amazing day, dude. Yeah, you too, man. Great to, great to talk, Wally. All right. Aloha. All right, man. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. I hope you got a lot out of that conversation. If you did, share this with other men, share this with other people. Even the women are listening to the show over about between 30 and 40 percent of our listeners are women. So don't leave them out. They're getting a lot out of the conversations as well. I look forward to hearing what you got out of this conversation and you can share your feedback and get in on the conversation in our private Facebook community. And again, you can get access by going to menofabundance.com, clicking on the members only tab at the top of the page, then click on the join the community button and I'll give you access. Now go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.